Well, hi again for USCFSales.com. This is Steve Lopez with another look at ChessBase 11, the chess database software. We've been looking at header searches in ChessBase 11, ways to search for games by information in the game headers, like you see down here in this list at the bottom of the screen, where we have player names, tournaments, years, that type of thing. We can do other searches in ChessBase. We can search for board positions, move sequences, all kinds of things. I will tell you that if you invest in a copy of ChessBase 11, one of the things you'll do frequently are position searches, where you're looking for particular board positions. There's a number of different ways to do it. cool thing about chess bases is there's always more than one way to skin a cat. I will tell you, though, position searches are kind of dicey things. Unless you're searching for an opening position or an endgame position with very few pieces left on the board, maybe king and minor piece ending or king and a very few pawns, you're not going to come up with very many hits in your position searches very often. I've been using this software for about 20 years and I can think of maybe two possibly three occasions where I've put in a middle game position from one of my own games and actually had something come up in a position search. Uh, you may think that in four and a half million games every possible position has come up. It hasn't, trust me. There are a, a near infinite number of positions in the game of chess and uh, when you do position searches typically you will find hits if you do an opening search or if you do a late end game search but as far as late openings, middle games, early end games you're not very often going to find positions that you uh, that, that are from your games. However, I will show you how to do a position search. There are a number of different ways to do it. I'll show you a real easy one in our video today. First thing you need to do though is a little bit of prep. You take your biggest database, the one with your most games, your master database, in this case I'm using Mega Database 2010. Right click on its icon in Chess Base's database desktop to get a pop up menu. Go down to properties, the very last command, click on it to get this dialog and you will see reference DB with a little box next to it that you can put a check in. Put a check in that box. Reference DB stands for Reference Database. There are a number of search functions in ChessBase that are basically one-click functions where you don't even have to go in and, and type stuff into a dialog. It'll just do a search, but you need to have one database designated as your reference database. And this typically will be your largest database, the one with the most games in it. That's typically what you're going to do. So pick your biggest database, right-click, go to Properties, get this dialog, and put a check in the box next to reference DB to designate that database as your reference database. Then click OK. We'll open up a board window by going to the board button up here on the ribbon. We'll pull this up. Let me grab this book here. I'm going to type in some moves. I'm just going to use the mouse and make the moves on the board to get to an opening position. An interesting position. We may be wondering what white typically plays here. There's a bunch of different ways to search for this position. Now keep in mind when chess base is doing an opening search like this, it's not looking at the move order. It's going to do a search on this board position, on this, on these pieces, on these squares. It doesn't matter how we got here. It doesn't matter what the exact move sequence was. It's going to look for this board position. That way it catches transpositions. It catches ways you get to a certain opening position by different move orders. That's really helpful. And that's something you ought to be looking at when you're studying openings, by the way, is not just memorizing variations. You should be looking at positions, looking at how you got there, looking at other ways that you can get there and understanding what's going on in a position rather than just doing rote memorization of move orders. A couple different ways we can look for this board position. The easiest one is right here in the notation pane. You see a bunch of tabs up here at the top of the notation pane. One of them says reference. Click the reference tab and chess base will go into your master database which you selected as your reference database and it'll start looking for this position looking for games in which this position occurred notice down here 
in the lower right corner, maybe partly obscured by our logo down here in the corner of this video, but notice that the search is progressing. We have a search bar down here, a progress bar uh, for how long this search is taking. We're seeing some progress up here, by the way, at the top of this, um, it, where we're seeing some moves being listed, we're seeing some statistics being generated, but it does take a couple minutes. It has to look through four and a half million games, so this does take a little bit of time. Notice though we are getting hits, that's encouraging. I told you earlier that if you're doing a middle game search, you may not find games in which your middle game has occurred. I've never, I don't believe I've ever had a middle game of one of my own games appear in a large database of grandmaster and master level games. I have had a couple of end games that I've been in in correspondence games come up in these kinds of searches, but never middle games. So the fact that we're finding some information coming up is actually really, really encouraging here. But again, it does take a little bit of time for this to generate. I did this earlier, uh, this exact same search on this exact same position. It took about a minute. The reason why this is taking a little bit longer is I am running video capture software, and it does take uh, it does use some of my computer's resources. So it does make my searches take a little bit longer than what you would encounter if you were doing this on your own computer. We're about two thirds of the way done now. We're up to about 65%. We're almost two thirds. So far at this point, we are seeing moves being generated in this upper tab. It's showing us moves that have been played in this position. So far, by and large, C2 to C3 seems to be the big move here. It's been played in 90 games so far. That's where this pawn moves ahead one square. That seems to be the preferred move. We won't know for sure until the search is done. It's also when the search is finished going to generate some statistics right here in the score column that we'll look at as well. Almost there now. We're up to about 94%. And there we are. We've hit 100% and we see a whole lot of information has suddenly appeared. What we have here are the four moves that were played in this position based on the four and a half million games in the Mega Database. We see the number of games in which these moves were played. Uh, the move C2, C3 occurred in 103 games with a score of 52.4%. The score is always given from white's viewpoint. So what you're seeing here is this move is a little bit better for white than for black, but not much. It's pretty much a coin flip at this point. Last played in 2008 with the best players being mentioned by rating, by the way, as Ruben and Tori. We see some other moves here as well, but they've been played very little. One move is only played twice. Uh, this other move also played twice. This one played once. So these statistics are a little bit suspect. You can't really bank on them because more practical testing of these moves is needed. So we do have a move that was played in two games, scores pretty well for black. Another one played in two games, scores pretty well for white. And this one only played once where apparently it was a draw because the score is 0, 0.0. No, I'm sorry, I lied. That would be wrong. It was actually a win for black. Um, but we can't really go by these numbers. The main thing we found out is C2, C3 is what white would normally play here. We have some statistical information in the center pane as well based on move orders. These are the number of games in which specific move orders are played. There's a whole bunch of things we can do with this particular part of the pane, but we're going to look at those in another video at another time. But this does give you some statistical information based on move orders out of this position, so you have an idea of what to play. Here we have not enough recent Grandmaster games. True enough, if you go down here and look at this list of games down here, you'll notice a bunch of ratings and the majority of them are in the master level range. So this is not a top level GM position. This doesn't happen very often. But if we want to look at a game, we can double click on a game in this list, pull it up, jumps us right to that position, and now we can just go through it. So we have a whole list of games and some valuable statistical information based on this position. So this is one of the ways we can do a position search in Chess Base 11 to bring up not just games, but also some statistical info to kind of guide us as to what the top players play, uh, whether they be masters or grandmasters, what is normally played in a particular position. There's other ways to do position searches in Chess Base 11, and we will look at those in future videos. Until then, for USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez. Thanks for watching.